I think during my second month ending, third month starting, I had high fever like 104, 103 and everything and um, I was, and I was, as I said, I was nauseous, I couldn't eat anything and I was like, I was so sick, hot, cold also along with the fever and at least fever is bearable because it goes off within 2-3 days but cold doesn't leave you for at least a good uh, week or so. So uh, what happened is that uh, I told my doctor, I'm like, I am not well at all, I'm having high fever and everything. She said take a Dolo 650 if you have a fever uh, above 100 and if you are having extreme cold just take a Sedzin at night and you will be good. And I am like kya kaam karega? Matlab, Dolo never works for me at least. But during pregnancy you can't take any other tablets so I just went along with Sedzin and Sedzin worked like a charm actually for me during my cold and I felt much better. But I had this constant period cramps and I never had any sort of period cramps my whole of my period journey in my life but suddenly during pregnancy I had such severe period cramps and pains and I'm like what on earth is happening and my doctor said that it is um, the growing pain basically the fetus is getting adjusted in the stomach and the stomach and the uterus and everything um, you know they are adjusting according to your body so you know the adjustment of stretching and everything it will hurt you you just have to bear with it she was very patiently explaining everything and I was like wow okay fine chalo Everybody told me that uh, second uh, trimester is going to be like a breeze, you won't have any symptoms, you'll be like good, uh, you'll be like having all the lost energy come back. And I was very thrilled because my fourth month was like, literally I was like, wow, I don't know what I'm Suddenly, my fifth month I started having extreme amount of uh, feeling of nausea and again no vomiting is coming but nausea is there like I couldn't tolerate anything I couldn't eat anything properly I was living on curd rice soups breads oats because anything that I could I couldn't eat anything it was that bad there are crackers outside because of some festival going on my whole life changed when I went for my anomaly scan on 5th of May and uh, that was my 6th month uh, starting I went there and everything was fine and my doctor was like you have to repeat your anomaly scan and I'm like why? Why should I repeat my anomaly scan? And then she was like there is some sort of small problem in the baby's bones so we have to make sure that you know it is not there or probably whatever because there is uh, no sort of advanced technology in this hospital so you go to this medi scan there is good you know uh, scan system there and everybody will tell you what it is and they specialize in fetal care. So we took another uh, scan after 5 days, like we repeated the anomaly scans and um, so the doctor over there in that uh, scan center, they told us uh, wait we cannot give you the reports, come after some 2-3 uh, days where you get the uh, report. I said okay fine just try to do it as soon as possible. So the next day we got called and we went and uh, spoke to the senior doctor over there and he said that uh, tell us what happened and everything. My makeup is done so you have to just bear with me talking to you guys about this entire journey. So we, when we went for a second opinion, uh, there also the doctor had told that you know there is some sort of problem in the bone of the baby. Either you can go for a termination of pregnancy or uh, you know you can just um, wait for 4 weeks and see. I said how do you talk about termination when I am 6 months pregnant? And she, he's like no because if there is a bone problem for the child, uh, why would you want to continue with the pregnancy? and you know have problems for yourself as well as the child and everything of that sort so I was completely devastated so I went back to my doctor and uh, she said that up to 24 weeks is a legal uh, week for termination and after that if you're going to wait it's going to cause a lot of problems so you decide in advance whether you want to do it or not so I was like sablok termination ki word I was because it's not easy carrying a child for six months and then you you know just say termin terminate the kid it's not an easy decision to make so we all were like completely like speechless and lost for words kaise, kaise log rehte, yaar, yaar. she told me you decide but uh, you have to uh, you know wait you wait and see one one more month you want to wait and repeat the scan you can do that so i said okay fine so we decided to wait because if there's an option why not wait so when we decided to wait, uh, what happened, we had, uh, she said before repeating the scan, if you want to undergo amniocentesis also, the report will come off within, I think, 2-3 weeks. So within that period of time, after 2 weeks or 3 weeks, I had undergone amniocentesis wherein they put a needle uh, in your stomach and again, there is no sort of anesthesia, you have to just bear it up, it is 
a lot of discomfort more than pain you will feel the needle going inside it will hurt you procedure is going on and you're breathing it will pain like give you some sharp pain so you will just control how much you can breathe during the procedure and the procedure is a like good 10 to 20 minutes of a procedure they will remove that uh, amniotic fluid liquid and then test out for any uh, any congenital uh, diseases or any abnormalities in the child like for down syndrome or whatever check for that or any major uh, complication is there they will check for that also so they did all that and already in nt scan they had found out the baby had doesn't have any sort of, sort of down syndrome or any other things but they wanted to repeat it again in amniocentesis because you will get a clearer picture as to what the major problem and cause if the baby has any so we underwent that also and we underwent that again in MediScan. At this point I had so much of pain, I'm like, kitna aur sahegi hum? I was like that. And they told me that it will take 4 weeks to come and they also took one blood report. Blood report came off within a week and blood report was clear. And basically the blood report was whether any problems have been given from the mother's uh, body to the child, that problem, hey, any, uh, whether it's there or not, that was the blood report and it was negative. They said that mother is clear, uh, she has not given any sort of uh, problems, major problems uh, to the child, uh, as in abnormalities or any other, some major things. And this report took like around four weeks, or five, six weeks to come. And I was like waiting with bated breath, what the heck is happening, we had no idea. Two weeks later what happened, we uh, had to undergo uh, ultrasound and uh, and that ultrasound again they said the same thing saying that there is development in the bones but not that much and again there is some sort of, there is a problem is still existing and the problem won't go away so you decide whether you want to terminate and now I was seven months pregnant and I was breaking down because it is not easy like you're in your third trimester okay So I went to the doctor and she said, listen, you are 28 weeks pregnant now. Already you have surpassed the uh, time of uh, termination and everything. You better decide whether you want to uh, terminate. I will have to undergo some legal procedures like, you know, proceedings to undergo your termination. You decide whether you want to undergo that or, you know, you want to wait and see furthermore or anything of that sort. And if you want to wait furthermore, I'm not going to terminate. You have to continue with this pregnancy. My brain stopped working altogether. It was like that. That same day, my husband's aunt called up and said that there's a very good doctor in Chetpet. Go meet her. And she's a very senior gynecologist. Like she's, she's practicing more than 45 years. Uh, go meet her and she will give you an idea if, if there is any. So we went and we got an appointment for 11 o'clock in the night. And we were the last patients she saw. We waited for so long, so long. She was like, listen, this is a very complicated case and I cannot give my opinion. There is a person who I, you know, personally discuss all this. He is more senior to me and he is also from MediScan. And I'm like, are we here MediScan? Say we came here. And then she's like, no, but I know that man personally and we will discuss, we'll ponder upon your case. You come back tomorrow. Kya dekhna pad raha hai? Next day, my husband had a show. He couldn't come. So my dad and I went. He called us at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. From 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock, we were sitting there and I was... My back was breaking. I, I, ha I had severe back pain all through my pregnancy and it was ridiculous. Like the mid part of my whole back was just going for a toss and they had these steel kind of seats and I couldn't sit at all. I was struggling so bad. I, I kept on begging the assistant like, let me just see her. And then she's like, no, no, madam has a C-section operation to do. You just wait, you just wait. And a lot of IVF cases also she sees. I'm like, and the amount of uh, prayers and everything that we are sitting and doing, she said that she'll talk to this doctor and get back to us today. I mean that day. So we went inside, we spoke to her at 5 o'clock, 5, 5.30 and then she's like, you know what, wait for summer time. And I'm like... What? What are you trying to And then she's like, I, I have to talk to the doctor. In front of us, she called him up and he's like, okay, I look into her uh, reports and, and I was like... I can't sit for more. And then she came back after half an hour. She was like, okay, listen, nobody can give you a clear cut answer whether to continue with the pregnancy or terminate it. Uh, but um, my, this doctor who she has spoken to, he has seen a lot of cases with his bone problem and all reverts back to normal. In future, there is chances. So she said, you can, if you want, you can take the chance or you terminate. I was like, there is 
आई एम नॉट गोन टू टर्मिनेट एट दिस पॉइंट आई हैव डिसाइडेड करके थॉट अबाउट इट एंड एवरीथिंग एंड बिटवीन दैट टाइम बिकॉज द वीकेंड बिफोर दिस मीटिंग ऑफ डॉक्टर आई वॉज अ नर्वस रेक लाइक आई हैड अ फुल ब्लोन ब्रेक डाउन आई हैव वेप्ट आई क्राइड फॉर लाइक द फुल सैटरडे संडे वे मेंटली प्रिपेयर चलो अगर करना है तो कर लेंगे वैसा सीन है बिकॉज आई हैव टू मीट माई ट्रीटिंग डॉक्टर एंड आई डिट नो वॉट शी वॉज गोइंग टू से सो एट दिस पॉइंट आई वॉज लाइक नहीं होएगा भाई हमसे एंड आई द होल वीकेंड आई वॉज जस्ट क्राइंग वीपिंग बिकॉज आई वॉज लॉस्ट I felt so lost and I've never felt so lost in my life ever and my mind was undergoing a train wreck it was that bad I was feeling miserable about everything I didn't want to talk to anyone and I didn't want to communicate even with my husband I was being really difficult with him also and he's like listen even I'm undergoing the same thing as you are it's my child also so you know you try to be little you know calm about it I said no that's not the thing I'm carrying this child I'm feeling bad about it and when the doctor told that there is some sort of hope I held on to that hope I said sorry i am not doing any sort of termination i am going to continue with this pregnancy what come may so like that this doctor gave us a hope i'm like okay fine chalo we'll be done with it karke so again i went and met my treating doctor my treating doctor is like are you sure you want to go ahead with this uh, pregnancy are you sure are you sure because aisa nahi hona ki you know for your selfish needs you are uh, wanting to continue this pregnancy but this child should not suffer in the future it might have a lesser life span and all that uh, and i'm like Listen, I made up my mind, and I'm going through with it. And please don't tell me anything further. And then she herself was like, "Would you like to have another opinion?" And I'm like, uh, "Okay, sure." I mean, up till now we have already done like three, four anomaly scans, repeated constantly. Like one more, if you're going to do, what is the problem in that? So she told, she suggested us to another doctor in Ananagar, and we had gone there. When I tell you that man is a gem, is an understatement. Okay. So, Admi, to hira hai. So we had gone to meet him for an opinion and not scan opinion. So that night uh, he had given an appointment of evening five o'clock or something, and from five o'clock to eight thirty nine we were just sitting there, and again steel benches and it was so painful. I I can't I couldn't like at this point I couldn't sit or stand for too long because of the back pain was so bad, like it was on a whole different level. ये भगवान क्या जुलूम है I waited and waited and waited, and this doctor finally came. And then he's like, "I'm really sorry. I'm reading your case still, and I'm like, you know, studying your case for me to give a proper opinion and everything." So we went to him, and then he explained to us, "See, this is the graph. That is the thing. That problem isn't so intense as you people think. It is first and foremost, it is not life-threatening." First thing he said that it is not a life-threatening problem for the child. That you people can think about such a big thing to go and abort a child at seven months. termination you know a child who's almost grown fully in 2 3 months you're going to deliver i don't think it is it is simply foolishness and i feel that the problem isn't that big for you to you know consider termination at all at the first place he thinks listen continue with the pregnancy and we will monitor the child every 4 weeks theek hai na har har char hafta we will be taking scans and we will check whether the child's growth is proper or not i'm like okay i mean sounds reasonable enough i came home and i had i think one of um the most rested sleeps because i was like okay i know there's a problem the problem is going to persist he also said that the problem will persist it's not like the problem is going to go off altogether but it's not as severe or life threatening as people think it is he said he'll talk to my treating doctor also and then i went back for a scan and i'm constantly like undergoing scans from then on i thought okay wow problems have settled and everything is fantastic and all that thing the end nahi hai dosto picture abhi Okay. On June 17, uh, my in-laws came down from Andamans, and uh, they had to go to Saudi for pilgrimage because they were doing Hajj, and they were supposed to leave from here itself. I think on 21st or 28th, if I'm not mistaken. On 17th, what happened is we were supposed to go for lunch outside, and uh, we planned everything, but the flight got delayed. Gone for dinner. Just my my parents, my in-laws, my brother-in-law, husband, and I had gone for dinner. and i came back and i had the most intense amount of right uh, upper abdominal pain and it went on to the back like whole semi circle of the pain joint was feeling so bad i couldn't sit or stand and i was almost in tears i have tolerated so much of pain so much of scans everything but this was like on a whole different level and i told my husband i said listen i don't know what is happening but i cannot take this pain anymore please take me to a hospital and there they asked what happened i said i had this this food i had that that food there was only a duty doctor there so i told her everything i said yeah, i had pantos before my meal and i also had jellyfish after my meal and in spite of that the pain is intense i cannot 
to order it in any more i told her she's like okay we'll do one thing we'll give you a butterfly iv we'll give you a butterfly iv and uh, we will give you pan in the injection and i said i have already taken pan it's it's not helping and she's like no no you take it you'll feel much better i have trypanophobia on a whole different level i said is it compulsory she's like it will relieve you like because it's fast effective and uh, better for you so i underwent that also at this point i was like nothing more worse can happen to me two days later this is what happened i'm going to show you a clip so this week has been kind of um strenuous and hectic to say the least because saturday it was 17th and uh, uh um, my in-laws had to come uh and uh, they we kept a dinner actually we had kept a lunch for them they were supposed to come in the morning and the flight got delayed from what 8:30 to 1:30 in the afternoon and uh, so we had to cancel the lunch and keep it for dinner but dinner not, not other relatives were available so only we we uh, just us we six of us had gone and shakti also had joined us uh, for uh, dinner and post dinner i had this intense amount of pain in my upper abdomen and it was going to my back or i don't know it was coming from my back to my upper abdomen but i had gone to the hospital because the pain was really unbearable and they said that out of gastric upset and they will give me an iv and in the iv they'll give me a pan injection um because you know in the iv the medicine tends to absorb into your body more quicker and the reaction uh, is much better they said that if it's still not settling we will admit you but the pain had not settled and i know it won't settle because i already had a pan for my dinner and jellucil post my dinner and still nothing was settling and i told her the iv will not work and whatever they giving in the iv it will not work because i have already had pan but she said you know what let's just give it a try and i'm like uh okay but with my trypanophobia i still agreed and i did it and it was so painful i'm going to show you photos it hadn't settled but i didn't tell it, tell it to them and uh, i came back and i think i came back around uh, 12 or 1 and my husband and my father were with me and my mother and father were at home my mother was at home i told them like you know just chill we'll just go and come my dad will always be there with me he's 24 he's always buried and he wants to always be there so that's very sweet of him and uh, it didn't settle but doctor told me keep eating pan and take hot compress do this do that so i was doing that and i was managing my life and everything was you know it was painful but i was just carrying on because i'm like why should i even think about it right now and i kept on going around with it but on 28th there is i think a day before yesterday on 19th monday i had this uh, severe pain in the stomach and i had loose motion so from night 9:30 to morning 20th of morning 10 o'clock i had uh, around 16 motions loose motions and i was so sick because i didn't sleep a wink the whole night and i had two major vomits like whatever i had for dinner came out and i had like what homemade roti the uh, prawns and potato fry i don't know what upset and everything just like so much of vomiting just happened and 6 o'clock in the morning i had another major vomit but there was mainly water which came out and 10 o'clock i was like you know what i cannot take it anymore so i called up my doctor and my doctor was saying that you know what you shouldn't have waited for so long because a uh, baby um, is there in the stomach and it might it the dehydration can you know lead to a lot of things i think it's better you come and get admitted and so i went to the hospital on the 28th and that's what 10 o'clock i had my last motion 16th motion and i had gone there met the doctor this she said it's better to get admitted and they'll start me on ivs and uh, they sat me on glucose and they said that because your system is completely like dehydrated my lips were so dark they were like blackish pink i was getting so dehydrated and almost like i don't know what is happening so they got me um, on drips and iv and iv also like they tried on this hand and can you see that it's become fully bruised because they couldn't get it and i'm telling them my left hand never works for iv you should always try the right but they didn't listen and they're like no we'll try on the left and they couldn't get it and finally on the right they got and it was can you see that mark it was so painful and uh, they started me on uh, drips and glucose i think they gave me four bottles of glucose over one whole day and uh, also some pan uh, medicines were going through and uh, 
I finally came home and uh, they said that I have to continue whatever medications I am taking and take a bland diet and for two weeks no caffeine, no milk, no dry fruits um, and no masala, no spice. Just live on ganji, gulati, idli because uh, right now a bland diet is the best for me and uh, so they said that and sent me back home and here I am oh, first day of my I got a discharge yesterday afternoon I got discharged and afternoon after I came back also I had like seven motions and uh, all loose and watery stools I had I had informed the doctor she said all those motions will slowly only uh, come down and they cannot give me any antibiotics because uh, my delivery is anytime soon in one and a half months, two months and they said that if there is any major complications, the antibiotics will have a lesser effect then not now, uh, then because you cannot keep giving antibiotics again and again so they said that slowly only we can do things so we are working on hydration and everything else so I kept meeting my doctor for regular checkups and everything and she was like listen you have to have a glucose test done and see whether you have uh, gestational diabetes I was like and then Dekato, I had borderline gestational diabetes and um, she uh, forwarded my case to diabetologist uh, in the same hospital. June 19th I met uh, my diabetologist and he said that listen you have it in the borderline uh, and we cannot give medicines because pregnancy and your baby has complications. We cannot give you tablets because the baby will lose more weight and you will lose weight. And this whole pregnancy I hadn't gained weight. Like people might think it's wonderful but it's not. Like I hadn't gained weight. Like my weight is static when I started pregnancy to now. My weight has not increased. My clothes size also have not increased. Nothing has increased. Only my breast size has increased. <laughs> Other than that nothing has increased in my body. So he said that already you are not putting on much weight. Your weight is not like the same what you started from in your pregnancy. First month to your eighth month you are the same. We will do one thing. Uh, we will uh, start you on insulin to take that insulin on your leg and you have to take three units uh, every night I was I was like listen I can't take any more injections because I'm so done how much injection should I take more I wanted to cry so bad and then he's like uh, no listen you have no other options if I'm going to give you tablet it's going to affect you and the baby so it's better you just take shots the first night that I had to take the insulin shots, I had like a major panic attack, I almost cried. Then my dad did it for me. The second night, I took the shot myself. I, I'm, I'm so proud of myself okay, for doing that. I took the shot myself and I'm like, oh. I gained confidence that it doesn't hurt because it's a small needle. But again, a person with trypanophobia undergoing injections every night, it's not funny at all. Said that uh, After four weeks, I will see you. You keep monitoring. Every three days, you have to monitor fasting, breakfast, uh, lunch and dinner postprandial. Every two, three days, you have to keep monitoring. Uh, all three. I said, okay, fine. And before that also, I was monitoring my sugar levels uh, because my doctor had told me to do that. And it was quite on the borderline. But he, after the insulin, it was a little better, my reports. But he said that because my fasting is high, I have to increase the unit to five. So instead of three units of insulin, I was taking five units of insulin on my thigh. And the major problem is I was starting to get blood clots. Like wherever I put the insulin, my I'll have bruises, like blood clots everywhere. And then he's like, avoid the area where you have veins. And my leg is full of veins. I don't know which area to put because wherever I put, even when there is no veins, it's still getting bruised. No, I, for that, you can't do anything. Like, Let's get to it. I can't take this shit no more, man. So I thought, you know what? I'm taking insulin shots every night. And then I'm also, you know, taking um, this sugar test four times a day, uh, every three days. I mean, what worse can happen? And then, you know, God was not happy with how much suffering I had. He put a boulder on my head and said, yeah, take this. So basically, uh, my husband had a show that day and I had gone to collect some parcel and I felt a uh, parcel down in the ground floor. Like from first floor, I'd come down and collect the parcel. And then I felt this urge to go to motion immediately. Like I couldn't control it. And I'm like, why is it happening? So I went uh, to the washroom and then uh, when I finished my motion, my whole commode was full of blood. After every motion you urinate. So I didn't know whether the, it was coming out of urination or it was coming out of uh, my motion. And surprisingly, I was like, I was not freaking out. For some reason, I don't know why. I'm like, kya or kya ho sakta? Because I have undergone so much in this pregnancy. So I called up my mother and I video called and showed everybody got panicked and she was like immediately come let's go to the hospital. Uh, and then I'm like listen let me just call up the nurse. One of the nurses, are, uh, she knows me very well. So I called her up and she was like uh, doctor has asked you to go immediately to the hospital. So then they took on test for the baby. For one and one hour they put me on that machine to check the monitoring of the heart and everything. And this child refused to move. They got scared, panicked. They were like you know what if the child is not moving. We have to do CS and all and I'm like 
क्यों नहीं हिल रहा है बिकॉज नाइट इज अ बेस्ट टाइम फॉर इट टू बी एक्टिव आफ्टर सेवन ओ क्लॉक माई चाइल्ड इज एक्टिव लाइक किक्स एंड पंच एंड एवरी थिंग एंड हॉस्पिटल सर मूविंग After 45 minutes, it started moving, and I'm like, oh my God, thank God, because I didn't want to undergo a C-section. Please, I'm already traumatized. I don't want to get traumatized more. Finally, baby was moving, and what happened? My mother's sister, brother, sister-in-law, and then uh, my my mother's sister's daughter-in-law also came off. And I'm like, क्या हो गया सब लोग क्यों आ गए एंड देन दे कन्फर्म द डॉक्टर कन्फर्म दैट द ब्लीडिंग इज नॉट देयर फ्रॉम द यूरिन इट इज फ्रॉम यूर मोशन प्रॉब्लम यू हैव फाइल्स एंड नेवर हैड फाइल्स इन माई एंटायर लाइफ शी इज एक यू नो यू मैट हैड सम टेयर इट मैट बी कॉन्स्टिपेशन लाइक दैट नॉट एंड शी इज एक यू गो होम नेक्स्ट डे यू मेक योर डॉक्टर ट्रीटिंग डॉक्टर सो वी वर देयर अंडर ऑब्जर्वेशन फॉर टू आवर्स एंड देन नेक्स्ट डे आई हैड टू मीट माई ट्रीटिंग डॉक्टर एंड शी गेव मी सम मेडिसिन शी सर इफ यू ब्लीडिंग जस्ट अपलाई क्रीम ओवर देयर एंड यू विल बी गुड टू गो and then i kept on having few episodes of those things and she said that if you're having too much uh, constipation have uh, to full act and if you're having too much of loose motion has porolac <laughs> sounds like some pokemon names <laughs> but i'm not taking medicines for anything even if i'm having any sort of motion problem only if i'm having constipation do i take to full act because we're not supposed to put pressure when we are going for motion apparently the doctor said other than that till now by far i'm in my ninth month and alhamdulillah no complication so far <sighs> i am just ready to give birth at any moment and i'm i'll be so done i'm right now in my 35 weeks of pregnancy my 36 week will start day after tomorrow and after 37 weeks i have to be prepared to go into labor any time and uh, inshallah let's see when will the delivery happen and once the delivery happens i will make another uh, delivery vlog to tell you people how my delivery went delivery vlog as in not me delivering a child me telling you the experience of the delivery how it went and how it happened so if you guys enjoy this video please do like comment and subscribe and if you new to my channel please do take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new videos that i upload i'll see you guys in the next video i love you bye